Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to create a generative nighttime cityscape just like the one behind me and only a few lines of JavaScript. Let's take a look. For this code exercise, I'll be using my own live code editor, CapJS, which works very similar to Twitter. Let's delete all the code we have and start from scratch. We'll start with a for loop, like I usually do, and get something being drawn to the screen. We'll iterate from 2000 to zero. And for each iteration, we're just going to draw a square. Now we've got a diagonal line running across the screen using the loop iterator for the x and the y axis. Let's also scale that by nine. So now we have tiny nine by nine squares running diagonally across the screen. To turn this into a building, we'll need to split the loop iterator into an X and a Y. You can do that by using mod to create a grid that is nine wide. And we'll use regular division for the Y axis. Let's plug in our X and Y for the X and Y position with the fill rect. Now we've got something a little bit closer. You might notice there's a slight diagonal angle here. That's because we need to convert the Y to an integer using this bitwise or zero, which is commonly seen on Twitter to convert to integers. Now we have something a little bit more like a building. Let's add some color using fill style. Now for this for loop, you can use brackets like you'll often see, but to save space, we'll combine it with commas after each line. I've just set the color to red, but what we want is a windows of this building and every other window to have color. To get that, we'll multiply the X by the Y and mod that by two so that even numbered windows are colored. Multiply by 255. Now we have something that looks a little bit like a building. Let's make those windows slightly yellow by storing the red component into the R variable, lowercase r. And for the green component, we're just going to want to use a little bit less than the red to give it an orangish yellow hue. Now we're going to need that building to draw in a different place every frame to create the cityscape. We can use the sign function to do this. For every frame, we'll want sign to be uh, using the time variable and multiplied by a value large enough to cover the 19 by 20 size screen. Let's store the 2000 into a variable so that we can reuse it and save more space. Now we have this building being spread across the screen, each frame. We'll also need to move down the screen each frame by adding t times a value. In this case, we'll use 420. We need even more randomization on the x-axis. So instead of just using t, sine of t, we'll use sine of t times z, which is going to spread it out all over the place pseudo-randomly. Getting a little bit closer, but we need the background to be colored in instead of being white. The way we can do this is by using the t variable, which is going to be zero on the first frame. And that building on the first frame is still in the top left, which is great because we can change the width of those pixels on the first frame to be 
2000. Now we have black background. Closer, but still not exactly what we want. So let's change the color when we're on frame zero also to be a gradient fading down from the top using I over three. Okay, that's looking better. Let's add some randomness to those windows. We can do that the same way I showed you before using sign of T. And we'll need to multiply that by the loop variable so that every one of these windows is different. That's looking interesting. Let's, let's use the loop variable squared to really mix it up. Okay. Now we have some randomized windows. You might notice that there are these thin vertical lines that are appearing all over the place. We can get rid of that by also converting the X component of the filerect to an integer using or zero because um, sine is going to be a float which is calling this filerect to be a float and when you're filling on a float that float is not an integer it's not going to be uh, seamlessly connected okay let's change the background a little bit add some blue we'll add a constant blue in the background that looks good in the background but not in the foreground so we'll use t again color in just the background let's give the foreground a little bit of blue too by using the red and subtracting the loop variable so we get a little bit of blue towards the top of these buildings that fades off I think it might look better if the building's windows were a bit more yellow. So let's increase this multiple of the red component to something like that. And the background would look nicer if there was a bit of variation in that too. So let's use uh, the cosine function to add a little bit of variation. We'll need to multiply that by a value large enough that we can see it. Now we've got something. Let's mix it up even more by using a square of the loop variable. And there we have it. Is there anything else that we could change to make it better? Well, in the original, this was a little bit lower. And we could probably, whoa, that's a little bit too much. Let's reduce that background slightly. Okay, that's looking a bit better. These numbers are really chosen to make it more aesthetically pleasing and don't actually affect the computation too much. So you can play around with these values to get a different look for your scene. And that is pretty much everything. We've created this tweet from scratch and I'll show you how we can squeeze it up to save a little more space. Right now it's 145 characters. Let's see if we can fit into 140 characters for Twitter. Since we used commas to combine these lines, we can subtract the white space. And now we've got it all fitting in the Twitter limit of 140 characters. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and keep on tweeting.